Hello, my name is Jared and I work for the Cumberland County Public Library. As you may already know, the summer reading program, the theme is Tales and Tales. When you're walking through the woods, or in some cases, even next to your house, learning how to recognize animals' tracks and other animal signs can help tell you their stories or tales about the animals around you. If you want to dig really deep into the topic and practice it, you'll be able to estimate from animal tracks how big the animal is that made it, if the print was made by their left or right paw, if they were running or walking, if the ground was slippery, when they walked by, and more. If you want to dig really deep into the topic, into animal tracking, you can also learn how to animal, analyze scat, which is another word for animal poop. This can tell you the story of what the animal ate, if they are carnivore, omnivore, or herbivore, if they're healthy or sick, and give you an idea of how long ago the animal was there. Online you can find a file about this program that has a few tracking pointers and also has some animal tracks like these. With the exception of a couple for comparison tracks, all the tracks are of animals that can be found in North Carolina and most of them besides the bear and wolf for animals that live in Cumberland County. Okay, first some basics. Damp sand, mud, and snow are some of the best places to look for tracks. Or if there's mud and a hard surface nearby, like asphalt or concrete, you can look on the hard surface and see the creature's mud prints that they left behind. And sometimes those will be excellent tracks as well. Since there isn't much snow in Cumberland County, you can, the areas next to streams and puddles are some of the best areas to look for tracks. But please try to make sure you're not causing erosion or stepping where you shouldn't step. The first book I'll be sharing some info from is an adult book called The Lost Art of Reading Nature's Signs by Tristan Gooley. And it's illustrated by Neil Gower and published by The Experiment Publishers. It not only covers tracking, but also teaches about plants and trees, the sky and weather, astronomy, and various habitats. It's neat because he teaches things like how to tell what type of soil there is, if there's water nearby based on what type of trees and other plants are growing, how to tell what type of weather is coming by reading the clouds, how to determine direction and time by looking at the stars, and more. In the book, Tristan says that prints appear and disappear depending on the angle we view from and the angle the light is coming from. Early and late in the day are the easiest for trackers as this angle of light shows the profile of a track much more clearly. Tracking early and late in the day is a tip I came across over and over again as I was re researching for this program. He says that you can test these principles out using an experiment. Make a very faint footprint in some sand or mud by pressing down very lightly with one foot. Next, walk in a circle around your track and notice how it is easier to see from some angles and almost disappears from others. If you return to the print throughout the day as the sun changes position, you can see how the angle of the sun affects how you can see the track. And also, um, your angle or height that you're viewing the track from can also make a difference. So lots of times trackers will bend down and kind of get closer to the ground and you can view the angle from that direction and you can see how the track appears and disappears that way too. For bird tracks, Tristan also talks about that in the book. And he says, for songbirds, like robins, perch on branches, and to do this, they need a toe pointing backward as well as forward, whereas ground-based birds, like chickens and also turkeys, have little need of this backward pointing toe. Birds of prey have impressive and obvious talons for snatching their prey. Seabirds and other others that need to move through water, like ducks, have webbed feet. Wild tracks 
is written and illustrated by Jim Arnosky, and it's published by Sterling Publishing Co. It's a picture book, but it has quite a bit of information and dozens of life-size prints from various animals. When you're tracking, it's important to realize that there won't be a clear outline like in the prints I made for the handout. And Jim's prints do a great job of conveying this through his use of shading and highlights. Some things I learned from this book is that you can often tell if a deer is running on slippery ground because their toes will be more splayed than when they're just walking. So they have two toes and when they're just walking they'll be kind of close together, but if they go in mud they spread further apart. That's also the case with many other hooved and pawed animals, like co coyotes and wolves and even your pet dog. If they're going through mud, they can kind of spread their toes to get better traction. If you see some deer prints that abruptly end with some very close by going in the opposite direction, you know that the deer was spooked by something, by something and that they did a quick turnaround and ran away. It was also interesting to find out that male deer often drag their hooves as they walk. So you can sometimes tell by the tracks whether it was a female or a male deer. Keep in mind that for many small animals, their forefoot or their front feet and their hind feet are very different. Just think of how rabbits are and squirrels are. One way to determine if you're tracking a wild canine or a domestic domesticated dog is that pet dog prints wander around a lot. Wild canines to help conserve energy and out of caution normally are more straight and direct. In Jim's book and online you can find reptile prints, but Jim suggests that following their tracks you should only look through binoculars rather than actually following them. This is because not only can the animals that leave them be dangerous, but they often go places that are dangerous for humans. If you really want to get into tracking, then the best book to look at is The Scouting Guide to Tracking. And this is by Lynn McDougall, Duggal, and it's published by Skyhorse Publishing. The Scouting Guide to Tracking talks about how quadrupeds walk, trot, and run, which allows trackers to estimate how big an animal is by studying their tracks. It will also help you analyze scat, which is animal poop like I said before, which can tell you a lot about an animal's behavior and health. The book also goes into how to read other signs, like how to tell where an animal has fed or slept and more. There's detailed profiles on various North American hoofed and pawed animals, which discusses their taxonomy, geogra geographic range, habitat, physical characteristics, tracks, scat, color, likely signs left behind, diet, mating habits, and common behaviors. It's also full of lots of prints, animal prints, and also pictures about the various animals. Here are some of the more general but interesting things that I learned in this book. Carnivores designed for fast pursuit, the canids and the felids travel on four toes. Omnivores that normally move with a shuffling gait like weasels, bears, possums, and raccoons have five toes on all four feet. Squirrels, rabbits, and hares have four toes on their forefeet and five on their hind feet. No normal pod mammal has fewer than four toes or more than five. Normally, all hoofed animals have two spreadable toes that can be splayed to form a breaking wedge on slippery ground, like with the deer. So they can spread their toes and it kind of digs into the ground so they stop slipping. There are some animals like horses, rhinos, and tapirs that, which have an odd number of toes. Most four-legged animals walk on the outside of their feet, which maximizes the distance between where their feet touch the ground, and this allows for more stability. So t sometimes you can tell if it was an animal's left foot or right foot that made the print, because one side of the print will be deeper. The majority of animals that need to be fast, whether they are 
often the prey of predators or the predators themselves, walk and run in a, in a digitigrade fashion, which means they're always slightly on their toes so they can burst into a run quickly. For these types of animals, the front part of their tracks will likely be the deepest and clearest. Animals which don't have to worry too much about being fast walk, walk in a plantigrade or flat-footed fashion. Some of the animals are skunks, which have their smelly spray to keep predators away, and also porcupines, which have their quills. Bears are also flat-footed, but some of them can run fast, up to 35 miles an hour, which is almost as fast of a, as a wolf, but wolves, or sorry, but bears tire more quickly. Another one of the most interesting things that I found in this book is the fact that gray foxes are native to the US and to the Americas, but red foxes are actually not native and they were imported from Britain for um, fox hunts. Uh, also, gray foxes can climb trees, but red foxes cannot. Like in Jim's book, this one also talks about the fact that uh, domesticated dogs, like your pets, will often wander all around, um, but wild dogs like coyotes and foxes and wolves will go from place to place to conserve energy and because they're more cautious. If you want to see a lot more of examples of real tracks, you can go to beartracker.com. The website has a lot, of great tr a lot of great pictures of mammal tracks and a few other types of animals of, as well. Most photos will have a ruler or other reference point to see how large the tracks were, and many pages also have pictures of scat along with notes to go with them. I hope this program helps you tune into the stories around you and hope you have a wonderful summer. Bye!